Thank you, Hugh. Good evening once again. Fulham and Wolves came up together from the Championship five years ago. And while the Cottagers have since been down again twice, there is no doubt who's in the ascendancy at the moment. While Wolves began to look stale before the recent bounce under Julian Lopetegui, Fulham have belatedly discovered how to recruit smartly and find consistency to a team who were tipped to struggle could find themselves heading into Europe once again. A reminder of the two teams once again. Carlos Vinicius is back for Fulham. Harry Wilson drops to the bench. There is still no Alexandra Mitrovic. Bobby Dekodova Reed drops back into midfield and is Leno in goal. Tete Diop, Bream and Robinson, Reed and Paulinia, Dekodova Reed, Pereira and Willian and Vinicius. For Wolves, Raul Jimenez looks for his first Premier League goal in over a year, only his fourth start of the season in the league. He's back in the team along with the former Fulham loanee, Mario Lamina. The players who make way, Adama Traore and Joao Moutinho. It is Sarin goal, Semedo, Dawson, Kilman and Bueno. Neves, Nunez and Lamina in midfield, Sarabia and Cunha supporting Jimenez in attack. Michael Oliver is our referee here this evening. Michael Salisbury is not too far away from here at Stockley Park, the VAR. It is a chilly but clear evening here on the banks of the River Thames. And Tim Ream, the Fulham captain, is wearing a yellow and blue armband tonight to support the people of Ukraine on the first anniversary of the Russian invasion in that country. And on the bench for Fulham is Manuel Solomon on loan from Shakhtar Donetsk who's been speaking very movingly about his experiences in the country a year ago today. And it's Fulham who will get the game underway here, playing towards the putt the end away to our left in the first half. In white shirts, black shorts and white socks, Fulham in their chain strip of dark green. And a Friday night at Craven Cottage is the perfect way to start your football weekend on the TalkSport network. And this game is live and exclusive on TalkSport from the Premier League. As Fulham play, an early ball forward. Bruno, the youngster, does well to shepherd it away from Deckard over Reed. Fulham, though, very animated in the opening stages. But it's back with Dawson in towards Ruben Neves and all the way back to Jose Sarr, wearing all lilac, defending the Wolves' goal away to our left-hand side and you get the feeling here Leanne Sanderson that Wolves may just have to weather the storm in the early stages but it's been given away by Robinson and Raul Jimenez comes forward the Mexican number nine for Wolves on this near side it's cleared away as far as Semedo and it's back to Dawson on the halfway line yeah that was a good recovery run from Anthony Robinson it looked like Jimenez got the wrong side of him but he showed really good pace to recover but I think the first you know the first minute or so it's been pretty intense you know you can see Wolves trying to start on the front foot so I think we're going to see the game kind of settle down after 20-25 minutes and we'll see but I think tactically both teams are very very good we know Marco Silva and Julian Lopetegui set their teams up they're very organised so it'll be a matter of you know cat and mouse who will break the deadlock and there was a very warm greeting between the two coaches on the pitch before kickoff. They were once in opposite technical areas in one of the big games in Portugal when Marco Silva was the coach of Sporting and Lopetegui was in charge of Porto. And of course now at different ends of the Premier League and Lopetegui given his first opportunity in England and there has been an unquestionable bounce they've won four of their eight games under the new coach after winning only two of their previous 22 games in the Premier League Wolves but only 17 goals throughout the season that's the lowest total in all four divisions but it's nine in the eight games under the new coach after eight in the previous 15 so he's clearly doing something right from a fairly low base as Dawson brings it forward now for Wolves on this near side in towards Jimenez and now Semedo looking to check back and he was possibly caught by Robinson but he does well to maintain possession and find Neves who spreads it wide towards the far side and the 20 year old Hugo Bueno looks to move forward but Dekeldover Reed quickly cuts off that particular avenue of opportunity for Wolves and it's back again towards the heart of their defence again quickly played forward flicked on towards Jimenez and then 
almost gathered on this near side again by Sarabia but it's all quite frenetic for Wolves in the opening stages and Willian gathers it on this near side with three minutes played on Talk Sport and it's Fulham nil, Wolves nil. Yeah, what we're seeing early scores as well is that Jimenez is checking quite deep to receive the ball, which is causing for them a little bit of a problem. But as we just saw there, Carlini just loves defending. You know, he gets his foot in. He has no right to even win that ball. And he's got four players around him and he always looks comfortable. Willian tries to clip the ball forward over the top under pressure, but he can't find Vinicius. And it's through towards Jose Sar once again. And the transformation of Willian has been one of the Premier League stories of the season. Under the radar, admittedly, but considering how poor he was at Arsenal to see him doing what he's doing here is incredible it's quite strange really because obviously at Chelsea we know how good he was but maybe at Arsenal going to London rival maybe it never really took to him both ways but as we saw you know with William he went to train with Fulham and obviously you know Marco Silva saw something still in him and it's amazing what can happen when you have a little bit when you have a manager that has confidence in you and that type of stuff he just seems to feel at home here you can see it in his play I'm not saying he's reached the heights that he did at Chelsea but that would be a really big ask because he's one of the best players in the Premier League for years in that position pinged wide to this near side by Ruben Neves and now Sarabia will come in field from the right for Wolves back towards Lamina back on familiar territory although it will be a different experience for him here having fans in the stadium he was part of the Fulham side when they went down behind closed doors a couple of years ago now Semedo again good crowd inside Craven Cottage this evening not too far short of 25,000 helped by the Increasing numbers in the Riverside stand on the far side. The central area in the upper tier is still empty, but Fulham fans either side of that, and they filled the bottom tier just in front of the, or what will be, the director's box. And it's not as cold here now with the Riverside stand blocking the wind, blowing in off the Thames on the far side. Now Dawson again for Walls, right towards Kilman. Kilman has the opportunity to play it long and early and that's what he does challenging for it was Cunha but he was flagged offside and it will be a free kick to Fulham with five minutes played and it's nil-nil here at Craven Cottage I think what we've seen so far I think Wolves have started the game very very well I was about to say they're possessing it and then Craig Dawson pings one out of play but those things happen and you could see he was shouting at Max Kilman to get higher as well but I think Wolves look like they've started the game very very well and both teams just look very comfortable on the ball when they're in possession and I feel like that's something that Wolves are going to look to do in this game you know Sarabia looks like he can check into space Jimenez can run in the channel and we know they look to bring Adama Traore off the bench as well at some point in the second half and that's something they look to do tactically as well and they're moving forward now with Lamina and he tried to play in Cunha to the left and it was just cut out on the edge of the Fulham penalty area here is Anthony Robinson back to his fellow American international team ring and then guided forward by Leno towards this near side but Fulham play the ball out in rather laboured fashion but now a clever touch from Willian and here is Robinson coming forward on this near side in towards Pereira who's had such a good start to his Fulham career but his ball wide to the right doesn't find Deco Dovery but won back quickly by Harrison Reed. but he's been penalised for the challenge on Matias Nunez and it will be a free kick for Wolves on the far side you could see as well, you know, Lamina picked up the ball and it was almost inch perfect for Cunha. They, they was very close to breaking, like, in behind the lines there. So that was a really good play from Wolves. But I think, surprisingly, Wolves have had most of the possession in this open six, seven minutes. And, you know, Fulham are trying to set a trap. Andres Pereira's in that 10 position. It looks like there's a, an injury down at the far side. Yeah, it's Harrison well. Reed on the far side who is down. And it took some time there for, I think, Michael Oliver to realise and then eventually Wolves did knock the ball out and it will be an opportunity for him to receive some treatment he was challenged on the far side by Nunez and it was I think the aftermath of the challenge and he did seem to maybe tweak something as he came away from that and he looks to be in some trouble yeah it doesn't it's never good when a player just sits down and you can kind of see hopefully he's going to be okay but you can kind of see the grimace in his face that potentially he might not be able to carry on but sometimes these ones hurt initially and you can run them off but it doesn't look good and just in front of us Marco Silva is giving instructions to a number of his players during this break in play don't forget this Sunday, TalkSport brings you exclusive radio commentary of Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury, live from Saudi Arabia. Coverage on the night starts at 7 o'clock on TalkSport 2. 
before switching over to Talk Sport at 9 p.m. for the main event. Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury on Sunday, live and exclusive and free to listen only on Talk Sport. And of course, a big day of sport on Sunday on Talk Sport. Half past four kickoff as well. The Carabao Cup final, Manchester United against Newcastle, live from Wembley with Adrian Durham, Sam Matterface, Stuart Pearce, and Lee Clark. And the first silverware of the season will be sorted out. Game day live with Adrian on the air from one o'clock tomorrow. No early kickoff in the Premier League, but Coventry against Sunderland, big game in the Championship from the CBS Arena, will be on Talk Sport 2 at 12.30. Leeds against Southampton is the Premier League commentary over on 2, of course. The bottom two in action at Ellen Road. And back on Talk Sport, 7.45 for Crystal Palace against Liverpool. It will be interesting to see the response from Jurgen Klopp's team after what happened against Real Madrid as a long ball is played forward for Wolves again towards the far side. Chasing was Cunha and Bert Leno leaves his penalty area to hook the ball away out of play for a throw-in. Yeah, it was a good read from Bernardo there. You never really want your goalkeeper having to come that far outside of the box because, you know, anything can happen. But I think that was a good read from him in the end. The Wolves here have settled down the better in the opening nine minutes on Talk Sport as Lamina comes forward again, almost played it through towards Raul Jimenez. And in the end, it was broken up neatly by Issa Diop, who tries to carry the ball over the halfway line for Fulham. Now plays it wide to this near side. And Robinson, space for him. Vinicius waits inside the penalty area, but the pass was behind him. Now Deckel Dover Reed tries to pick out Pereira on the edge of the box, but the pass was wayward. And Wolves will clear, but it's quickly won back. And here is Tim Ream on the halfway line wide towards Tete and all the way back towards Leno once again I'm surprised that Anthony Robinson didn't try and whip it in you know in between the back line because Dawson and Max Kilmer were running towards their own goal but he tried to pick out Carlos Vinicius and he was trying to be a little bit too cute to find Andreas Pereira but good bright spark from Fulham there Pereira once again a good ball wide to the far side Tete with the cross into the penalty area hooked away at the far post by Nelson Semedo, but Fulham beginning to hit their stride here with 10 minutes played at Craven Cottage. Nil-nil on Talk Sport. Tete with a throw in on the halfway line just in front of the Fulham technical area. And he's got support in field from Paulinho, but in the end, it's further forward looking for Pereira, and Dawson will guide it back towards Jose Sarr once again. I think a special mention has to go to probably the Cordoba Reed as well because he's so versatile and can play in a number of positions and that's not always the case. You know, he could sit along the front line, he can play a wing back almost against Chelsea. That's what he did in that game as well. So, and he's got a fantastic engine and a really good football brain. So, you know, this Fulham team are really organised and you can kind of see that in their play. They pick their moments, but I think Carlos Vinicius, for me, when he does play and when he does start, he needs to get on the ball a little bit more. Well, versatility can be a curse for some players, but in a squad like Fulham's, which has quality, but maybe not necessarily the depth, Bobby Deco Dover Reed has real value to Marco Silva. Now Tete again on the right hand side, all the way back to Issa Diop, who has proved to be another inspired signing. And so often when Fulham have been in the Premier League, the recruitment has been poor and they spent a lot of money on players who have not really made an impact. This season, they've not spent a huge amount, but every player's done a job. Absolutely, and I think it's easy to say their recruitment's been fantastic, but I think I said it before the game. You just wouldn't have really expected these players to be doing as well as they are. And that's down to the management, that's down to the, the club, and making it a real home feel. I think that makes a difference, because a lot of these players, I'm not quite sure other teams would have necessarily wanted Anthony Robinson or Paulinho or William. You know, they, a lot of them, Andres Pereira, they, they didn't have that in them, but they've all come together and it's working very very well for Fulham former England and Arsenal striker Leanne Sanderson with us here on Talk Sport at Craven Cottage sat at the heart of the Stevenage Road stand as Wolves comes forward now a low ball in looking for Raul Jimenez and Tim Ream with what was probably a goal saving challenge to lunge in and prevent the ball finding the Mexican six yards out great tackle from Tim Ream to just intercept that because I'm sure him, him and his thought he was just going to tap it in the back of the net. I think Lamina started the game very, very bright, getting on the ball, finding space in the midfield, but that ball there was almost inch perfect for him and his, but fantastic read and positioning from Tim Ream. Dawson now on this near side, the Wolves right. Good ball forward to Nunez who takes it down in his stride and finds Jimenez with his back to goal. 
it's Idiop just have a nibble of his ankles but it's wide towards the far side Bueno on the overlap with a cross into the penalty area and the challenge comes in from Tete but it goes behind for the game's first corner great ball into the midfield from Semedo Cunha took it in his stride and we've seen Fulham Wolves has really started on the front foot Fulham haven't really got a hold in this game and you know you can see why Wolves have been so effective especially when they're attacking they've got good quality players and we've seen early on that they're almost you know it's almost an inch perfect pass that Fulham are reading very very well we know Tete are always in the right place at the right time and the corner high into the penalty area headed away by Ream you'll hear the Fulham fans go Ream every time he touches the ball but it's back out wide towards the far side again and Bueno is being closed down as he looked to try and play the ball back towards the penalty area but it will be a throw in for Wolves midway inside the Fulham half on the far side 13 minutes played here on Talksport nil nil at Craven Cottage on a chilly dry evening on the banks of the River Thames the Wolves work their way down the left hand side and have another throw in once again which Bueno will take a player who only made his Premier League debut in October but is enjoying a decent run of games in the Wolves first team now and the final touch there on the far side was off Jimenez and it will be a goal kick to Fulham yeah we've spoken a lot pre-game about the lack of goals that Wolves have scored in their centre forward position but with Raul Jimenez I want to see him stay in the box a little bit more I think he checks we saw from that throw there he's checking out deep and there's no one that's running in taking that space you know you can see Cunha trying to do that Neves it doesn't really come natural for him to get that high up the field but I think Jimenez is checking too deep for me right now now deckled over Reed on the right with a cross into the penalty area over the head of Vinicius and claimed unchallenged by Jose Sarr at the near post Fulham with 38 points from their 24 games so far and that's the most from a promoted team at this stage since Wigan back in the 2005 2006 season under Paul Jewell and they have really done well against teams like Wolves seven of their eight defeats so far have come against the current top five and the one exception a 3-1 defeat against West Ham in early October and that's their only loss in 17 games against teams currently beneath them in the Premier League table if they win here tonight they'll move level on points with Newcastle who are currently fifth in the table and they will be only a point behind Spurs so could we say that Fulham will be part of the race for the top four? I think it's possible. I know Marco Silva's downplaying it, but I think the players will feel it. There's a good feel about the club. The players all look confident, and they seem like they can beat any team on any given day. I think one thing I think this Fulham team now have is they're better organised, and all their players know their roles and responsibilities. Deckled over Reed, finding Tete into the penalty area, but tracking back to make the challenge was Nunez, and Fulham have their first corner with 15 minutes played on talks for. Yeah, good play, great tackle in the end. I like the switch of the play from Paulini in that position as well and Tete and the Cordova Reed had a good little combination down the right hand side and Nunez is in the right place to take it out for a corner Fulham have scored 10 goals from corners in the Premier League so far this season and they're looking to create something else here Pereira with an outswinger towards the edge of the penalty area all the way out to Harrison Reed. I don't think he was the intended target he controls and then plays it back towards Pereira but he volleys the ball into the penalty area but the whistle are gone and it will be a free kick for Wolves that was a fantastic decision from Harrison Reed to play that ball back out to Andreas Pereira because you could see he was looking to go back towards Tim Ream but could see that Sarabia and Jimenez was both going to read that so it's unfortunate that it's gone out for a goal kick because I thought that was a really good switch of play from Harrison Reed. Andreas Pereira with six assists so far this season we've talked about the spectacular goals he scored all the way from home in the Premier League but a team which sometimes has struggled for creativity in the Premier League in the past has it in abundance with players like him and William really at the top of their game at the moment he's got fantastic delivery as well from set not only from corners but from free kicks I like the way that he you know puts the ball into the box with a lot of pace now an opportunity for Cunha to bring it forward. He goes down dramatically, caught by João Pelinha. And it was a foul, a challenge from behind. And João Pelinha picks up the game's first yellow card. Yeah, I mean, I, it was a foul. I'm not quite sure if I think it was a yellow card. 
you know, this early in the game, it wasn't nasty. It wasn't like he had a high start or anything like that. It was definitely a free kick. But for me, I don't think it's a yellow card. And looking at it again, it wasn't necessarily a challenge from behind. It was a foul. But... Cunha sold it quite well. I think he, he made the most of that, which made Michael Oliver make that decision because I don't think it was as bad as it seemed. 18 minutes played, Fulham nil, Wolves nil on Talk Sport with Now Sports. And don't forget that with Now Sports, you can stream all the Sky Sports action like this game live right now for 11.99 with no contract. Search Now Sports. And Matias Nunez is still down. Of course, he was one of the big money signings made by Wolves. £38 million from Sporting. And he's found it difficult to make an impact at times. But it will be a free kick. Which Ruben Neves is over midway inside the Fulham half. These ones are quite difficult because it's too far to shoot. And then usually it ends up having no backlift on it and going through to the goalkeeper but Neves might fancy his chances from here well we've seen him score some spectacular long range goals but not on this occasion lofted wide to the far side and that's what often happens straight out of play for a goal kick it's so difficult because the positioning of where the ball is you know just inside the halfway line 10-15 yards in there and it's almost like you've got to put a bit more pace on the ball because at, at times every single time or you just start to play from there you know keep the ball pick your moments because it's almost like inevitable every single time it's going to go out for a, a goal kick and now Fulham again trying to play out from the back but there is a press from Wolves and it's all a bit scrappy flicked on by Dakodova Reed and Vinicius will try and hold off Dawson but Dawson comes in to make the challenge and now Bueno four walls plenty of pace from him down the left hand side he's got support in field from Cunha but now Fulham have it back wide to this near side and William but read well by Semedo heads in field for Neves and wide towards Semedo again down the right first time ball on towards Jimenez back towards Semedo inside the penalty area and the curling shot is straight into the arms of Leno from Sarabia but what a goal that would have been good play from Wolves good break you know they didn't have much space and well Jimenez found Sarabia in the inside and he did everything right he dropped his shoulder apart from the execution but really good play from Wolves nice intricate passing from Semedo as well I think it took a deflection off of Diop that maybe took a little bit of pace off of the ball so Bernardino could just kind of carry it but really good play from Wolves and Pablo Sarabia scored 15 goals from midfield on loan at Sporting in Portugal last season of course signed from Paris Saint-Germain for Wolves now Neves and again he's looking for that early ball forward to pick out either Cunha or Jimenez but Reem and Diop have become a very durable partnership for Fulham at the heart of their defence and it's back with Bert Leno once again 21 minutes played on Talk Sport 0-0 here at Craven Cottage sumptuous first touch on the far side from Beckel Dover Reed and now Jao Polinia claims he was fouled by Lamina and the referee agrees and it will be a free kick for Fulham midway inside the Wolves half on the far side the right yeah definitely a free kick I think Paulinho wanted the advantage play because he went down and he came out with the ball but he's so good Paulinho what a player he's been this year for Fulham and probably one of the best midfielders this year in the Premier League you know consistency that's exactly what they've needed he defends he can attack you know and it's a good position here for Andreas Pereira to put one of the balls I was talking about into the box with some pace on it And Diop has very quickly rushed forward to join his teammates on the edge of the Wolves penalty area. Pereira flighted high, flicked on towards this near side. Ream will try and keep the ball in play, but Lamina gets there first, keeps the ball in play, almost gives it back towards Ream, then slips off the pitch. And here is Reed for Fulham on this near side. Clips it wide towards the far side. And Tate, Tate encouraged to shoot. He does have a go, but it's blocked by Cunha. And now Wolves will try and break themselves but Jimenez with the ball forward doesn't pick out Sarabia and Ream will knock it all the way back towards Leno but I, I know there was it was broken play there Leanne but once again Jimenez wasn't the focal point in attack was he? No not at all and he's like I said he's checking to the ball quite a lot it seems to be working to a certain degree but I want to see Jimenez stretch the field a little bit you know Cunha's staying on the left hand side Sarabia's on the right they're quite rigid they're not really being interchangeable and he's dropping in very very deep and there's not really an out ball Jimenez now 
lays it back towards Sarabia and a good ball wide towards the far side and Wolves here can load the penalty area. Jimenez waiting, nods it back, Sarabia onto the right foot, strikes low and scores a first Wolves goal in the Premier League for Pablo Sarabia and the team that never seemed to score away from home have scored a cracker here at Craven Cottage Sarabia denied moments before but no mistake this time and Wolves, a team struggling at the wrong end of the table are ahead against inform Fulham Fulham nil, Wolves won See what happens when Raul Jimenez stretches the field. A lovely little cushion header down to Sarabia and a fantastic finish. But I think that's probably one of the first times we've seen Raul Jimenez in the 18-yard box. He did really well to keep the play alive as well. And he just heads it down. Lovely cushion header. Great first touch from Sarabia and in the back of the net. And Tim Reid was scrambling. He was trying to get there, but great goal. Fantastic play. And I think Wolves deserve that. They've come here. They've been fearless. And I think they deserve to be 1-0 up. Really good finish from Sarabia, his first four Wolves in the Premier League. Only the fifth goal that Fulham have conceded in their last ten games since the World Cup, but it was coming. Wolves have been the more incisive going forward so far, and they deserve to be ahead with 24 minutes play. Absolutely, and I think it's important to mention Raul Jimenez in that situation. So many players you see going for goal when there's not enough pace on the ball. He heads it back across, very unselfish. He made the cushion header look so simple, and Sarabia was there. But I think Wolves have come here, and they almost look like the home team. I mentioned it before the game. They look really good away from home. They probably play better away from away from home than they do at Molyneux for some reason. I'm not quite sure why that's the case, but that shows you that they have a good mentality. Because to do that away from home in the way that they do that, on the front foot and they have been for the first 25 minutes now Vinicius wins it on this near side the left crosses into the penalty area headed away by Kilman but now Wolves may have to do some more defending here is William Ruben Neves stoops in to win it back but then fouls Polinia and it will be a free kick for Fulham about 25 yards out slightly left of centre and Fulham here look rocked by that because they've not started the game particularly well and now they find themselves a goal down. Absolutely, but we know from set pieces Andres Pereira has got a good delivery. Anthony Robinson and Tete have had a couple of opportunities where they put the ball in as well. Pereira with the free kick once again. Flights it high to the far post. Diop is the target and the flag's up for offside as they cross back into the penalty area. Was defended well and it will be a free kick. Four Wolves, you're listening to Game Day Countdown live on Talk Sport after us. Adam Catterall brings you Fight Night ahead of the Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury fight, exclusively live on Talk Sport this Sunday. And from nine o'clock over on Talk Sport 2, live and exclusive ball by ball coverage of the second day of the second test between New Zealand and England. England bang on top after another great performance with the bat on day one. You can join the team from nine o'clock over on talk sport two here on talk sport 25 minutes played fulham nil wolves one not a scoreline that many people anticipated no absolutely not but i mentioned it before wolves away from home they look pretty comfortable and they seem to have that mentality that they can go anywhere and get a result which is a good mentality to have i think their home record needs to be a little bit better but what we're seeing right now i mentioned it many many times carlos venetius has barely touched the ball now i know some number nines don't mind not touching the ball but i think for me when i played i wanted to touch the ball get the confidence to find yourself within the game because he's barely touched it and he's not having any type of impact on the game even when the ball is going back to Saar Andres Pereira is the one that's pressing the goalkeeper you know Carlos Vinicius is almost dropping into the number 10 role so he needs to stretch the field a little bit more and get on it a little bit more for me now Willian has been crowded out but Semedo will go all the way back to Dawson the early ball forward again Reen comes across and it's a clattering challenge into Cunha and he's been penalised Tim Ream he's not too happy with the decision there's a mouthful towards the assistant on this near side Stuart Burt but no doubt Fulham are rattled here you could see with that one, I can understand why Tim Ream would feel like that wasn't a foul because it could have genuinely gone either way. But again, you know, he was caught 1v1 going up against Cunha. He had to make that tackle. So positionally, I think Fulham need to look a little bit better organised because we know Ruben Neves now, similar to Andres Pereira, can deliver a really, really good ball. Sarabia and Neves over the free kick. Neves whips it in, looking for Dawson. It's headed away as far as Breno on the left-hand side further wide
towards this near side and Jimenez who returns across back into the penalty area and again it was the sort of cross that Jimenez needed to be on the end of rather than delivering absolutely but maybe Lopetegui is okay with him doing that because I just that doesn't really make sense because Jimenez has peeled out to the left hand side there tried to find Sarabia the better ball would have probably been to Ruben Neves and he made that pretty evident he was the player that was open as well so again that might be something that Lopetegui is okay with right now it seems to be working because they're 1-0 up but I think for me your number 9 has to stay in and around the 18 yard box stretch to fill because you know Tim Reeve and Dio will have a field day if no one's going up against them Current Fulham nil, Wolves one for the latest odds. Head to Labrooks right now. You can back Fulham to win at 13 to two, Wolves to win at two to one on, and the draw is 14 to five. All thanks to Labrooks. Play at labrooks.com. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. And Fulham try to build again down the right hand side, but it's defended well by Wolves, and it will be a throw in to the visitors. A goal up here at Craven Cottage, just in front of the cottage, away to our left hand side Alexandra Mitrovic is currently sat up there under a bubble hat and there's no doubt that Fulham are just missing his presence because even when he doesn't have the ball it's just a real nuisance for so many reasons yeah and there's some team there's some players that when they're not on the team sheet I'm sure Max Kilman and Craig Dawson were happy that they're going up against Carlos Vinicius as opposed to Mitrovic and there's no disrespect to Carlos Vinicius but he's not really caused them any type of problem and I feel like Mitrovic just has that swagger about him that confidence that he's difficult to play against Newcastle Manchester United and Spurs are the only teams to have won here so far this season the Wolves relatively speaking have been going well under uh, Julian Lopetegui they were bottom of the table during the World Cup break and the last seven teams in that position after 15 games have been relegated from the Premier League but they're now three points clear of danger and they play Liverpool live on TalkSport 2 at Anfield on Wednesday night that should be a very interesting game considering recent events at both clubs and of course Wolves hammered Liverpool in the corresponding game at Molyneux not too long ago now Andres Pereira back again towards Paulinha and Fulham have just been a bit stodgy through the midfield area at times but now Robinson tries to work the ball away from Sarabia but gives the ball away Sarabia quickly plays the ball in field to Semedo and Semedo in the end can go all the way back towards Lamina and there's no doubt Leanne that Wolves are in control here absolutely I mean that was really good play from Semedo to recover the ball I think Lamina down this right hand side he recovers very well from the midfield as well I think a lot of players I said it before the game I think it would take something quite special to break the deadlock in this game because we saw the first 25 25 minutes both teams were kind of feeding each other out they're very good on the ball both teams but they don't really counter that well we've seen Anthony Robinson down his left hand side a couple of times almost get a little bit lucky but then if he goes forward and loses the ball we've seen Lamena we've seen Semedo they're quick to counter and Sarabia is also ready to go as well so I think Wolves have been in control for most of the game which has actually surprised me quite a lot in this opening 30 minutes because we know how good Fulham are at home well they've not won back-to-back -back away games for over a year in the Premier League but they were victorious at Nathan Jones's final game as Southampton manager at St Mary's and they are winning here at the moment with 31 minutes played on talk sport at Craven Cottage and don't forget coming up on Tuesday night FA Cup action on TalkSport 2, we're back here for Fulham against Leeds and then over on TalkSport, Bristol City against Manchester City with news of all the other ties that evening and it's Premier League action on Wednesday, Arsenal against Everton, live and exclusive on National Radio here on TalkSport, is on TalkSport and then Liverpool against Wolves in the Premier League will be on TalkSport 2 and we'll also have news of all the FA Cup ties taking place that night as well. That was a really good switch from Nunez and I think this is something that Lopetegui is setting them up to do, stretch the field, because he switched it, Semedo couldn't quite get down the right-hand side, but that's something that I feel like they're trying to capitalise on, maybe because Anthony Robinson is so attack-minded that they see a little bit of space there on the back post. 
Rock forward again by Bueno, who's shown no real fear for Wolves down the left-hand side. He careers through a couple of challenges, but eventually Fulham do win a free kick. The challenge on Paulinho, just in front of the Wolves technical area. And we've not seen a huge amount of movement from Julian Lopetegui so far in the match. But whatever his game plan was for this game, it's working at the moment with 12 minutes to play in the first half, leading by a goal to nil. Absolutely, and it seems to me that he seems to be okay with Raul Jimenez almost having a free role checking into feet as long as Sarabia and Nunez going behind. And I think it seems to be working right now, but the retention of the ball has been very, very good. They've been pressing from the front, and I feel like they're forcing Fulham to give away the ball pretty easily. I mean, even from that free kick that Fulham had, well, him and his press from the front, you know, which made them kick out for a throw. So I think Wolves have definitely started on the front foot. They look like the home team, so to speak. You know, you can hear some of the Fulham fans getting a bit disgruntled because they've come to expect a little bit more from their team this year. Now it's been given away cheaply and a long-range shot from the halfway line is fired in by Cunha. And it was optimistic. It was miles wide, but he spotted Brent Leno off his line and thought he'd have a go. It was absolutely on. It was just poor execution. But it was, you know, they do say if you don't shoot, you don't score. But it was pretty far off. But a bad giveaway from the Cordova really into the midfield. But I can see why Cunha tried that. Because Berneno was off his line. But poor attempt in the end. Fulham nil. Wolves won on Talk Sport with Car Finance 24-7. Search Car Finance 24-7 today. And there's Pereira on the edge of the penalty. Breaks out to Polina. His shot is deflected. Ricochets towards this near side. Lamina just bumps Pereira off the ball and is able to clear up to the halfway line Jimenez brings the ball under control works it neatly with the goal scorer Sarabia just in front of us now a switch of play from him from right to left towards the far side Neves nods on towards Cunha Cunha could be in here if the ball is played correctly and Cunha does play it forward towards Breno on the edge of the area but Tete does just enough in the end to hold him up but it will be a throw into Fulham in the end level with the edge of their own penalty area on the far side that was an absolutely brilliant switch of play from Sarabia down this right-hand side because it looked like, again, Jimenez had checked in, so there was absolutely nobody down the right side. He switched it out, and it almost created something. But you can see, you know, the players are fearless down the left, fearless down the right. They've come here, and they feel like they've got their chances. They feel like they can get out of here with three points. And it's quite surprising, really, because Fulham can't get a hold of the game at all. Reed now plays it wide to this near side. And Robinson. Here is Willian. And this really is an echo of some of the performances under Scott Parker a couple of years ago when Fulham were relegated, where they didn't play badly, but they just never seemed to do enough. Here is Polina, back towards Ream again. Ten minutes to play in the first half here on Talk Sport. Fulham nil, Wolves one. And the team who have spent so much of the season bumping along the bottom of the Premier League, continuing their revival, but here is Deckard over Reed with a cross into the penalty area. And Kilman is there to sweep the ball away inside the six-yard box. And Fulham have a throw-in on the far side. You could see there was appeals for offside, but I think it was a good run from Dickel Dover Reed in the end. He was offside earlier on a free kick, which was quite, you know, sloppy from him. But he got in behind and he almost created a chance for them to put it in the back of the net because William and Carlos Vinicius was there hunting, ready to go. But again, you know, one, I want to give a special player mention like Lamina. I think he's been brilliant in his opening 36 minutes. And a lot of, of the times he's in and around the ball, getting on the ball, defending well, you know, in the right back position. And these Wolves players are comfortable in any position. Position. And I think that's what Julian Lopetegui has changed, similar to Bruno Larger, but he's changed that little bit because they just look like they can play anywhere. Maisie dribble now from Dakel Dover Reed. Vinicius with a header at the near post, but it's a comfortable save for Jose Sarr in the end. But it's a rare piece of creativity from Fulham in the first half. Yeah, I'd expect, I mean, there wasn't much pace on the ball. It came from a Tete throw, falls to the Cordova Reed. He puts in a great trickery down the right-hand side. And I'd expect Carlos Vinicius to do a little bit better there. Granted, there wasn't much pace on the ball. I'll give him that, but it was a free header. He could have even probably chested it down in that situation. Now Ruben Neves, wide to the far side again. And Bueno for Wolves. Eight minutes to play in the first half here. On Talk Sport. And Pablo Sarabia with his first Premier League goal for Wolves. They lead here by a goal to nil. Dawson all the way back to Jose Sarr once again. Wolves with only one clean sheet in their last 15 away games in the Premier League. That was in a goalless draw against Bournemouth 
back in August but they've been really troubled in this game so far we have to say now Kilman who started the game wearing a facial mask but has since torn it off plays it forward to the far side now Nunez infield again to Dawson and Wolves here are very much playing the game at their own pace at the moment and Fulham are doing all the chasing yeah they can't get near them at all they're possessing the ball very very well they look comfortable you know they look like they're picking their moments to go forward and they've been very very impressive in the first 38 minutes and Lamina almost dropping in as a third central defender at times but when he does that it does give players like Dawson and Kilman the opportunity to move forward themselves so there is a degree of rotation about Lofotegi's side and Fulham are finding it difficult to cope with yeah Lamina I think he's been very very good in this opening 38 minutes I think it's one of those things when you watch the games live I think you have a true understanding for the game understanding that Lamina has because he looks like he can go forward positionally Andres Pereira hasn't touched the ball but that's due to Lamina's being almost watching his every move and being in the right place at the right time now Semedo on this near side challenged by Willian so he goes back into his own half and the ponytail Ruben Neves and it's all the way back towards Jose Sarr once again and Fulham have been so good at putting teams under pressure here almost through force of will so far this season but not so far tonight Jimenez able to bring the ball down on his chest and he's brought Cunha into the match on the far side now Nunez Bueno level with the edge of the Fulham penalty area looking to attack curls the cross in towards Sarabia headed away by a flying Tim Ream nodded down on the far side again towards Matias Nunez and Wolves here are stroking the ball around with real purpose now Bueno again has the opportunity to find Nunez he delivers the cross in and the header over the top from Neves unmarked six yards out he should have scored to make it 2-0 yeah you can see Ruben Neves in that situation fantastic ball into the box but you expect him to at least hit the target but again good play from Wolves you know fantastic play I mean we know Ruben Neves usually puts the ball in the back of the net I wouldn't say it was an easy chance but I'd expect him to at least hit the target Anti Robertson looked like he might have just done enough but I think right now it looks like Wolves have more players on the field than Fulham they just can't get near them every time they're pressing they're just popping it around them and it looks really comfortable for Wolves so I'd expect maybe going in at half time you know, Marco Silva might have to make a tactical change because they're just not getting any space on the ball at all. Every time they give away the ball, Wolves come straight back at them and they certainly look comfortable. They just have no space around them. And it didn't really work with Bobby Deckard over Reed as the centre forward at Brighton. And we have to say, it's not really working here with Carlos Vinicius playing that role here tonight. And he is a centre forward. Yeah. But I think he's the type of centre forward, Nigel, that doesn't really, he doesn't have to be touching the ball. You know, we saw that in that late goal he scored against Chelsea. He literally had minimal touches in that game. But if you're going to do that, you have to impact the game in some way. You know, he's not really causing any problems at all. Now Diop, wide to Tete on the far side, further wide to Deckard over Reed. And now Diop again and Fulham are having to take patience to extremes at times. Now Ream will drive forward down the centre beyond a couple of challenges finds Harrison Reed who works it wide to the far side but the pass was behind Deckard over Reed straight out of play in front of the Riverside stand that it will be a throw into Wolves and we have four minutes to play in the first half on Talksport with Wolves leading by a goal to nil and deservedly so that was brilliant play from Tim Ream he, he, the pace that he showed to come away with the ball and then he played a nice pass into the midfield Tete picked up the ball couldn't quite connect it because Sarabia in that instance was really pressuring Tim Ream and he could have ended up giving away the ball but fair play to Tim Ream he done really well now Nunez strong challenge from him but Fulham win the ball back it was Paulinha wide towards Deckard over Reed on the right hand side Vinicius waits in the centre Tete with the cross swirled beyond him and claimed by Jose Sarr on the stretch at the far post but he has not really had a difficult thing to do so far no comfortable save for Jose Sarr you know the ball was floated up nicely for him to come and collect and yeah they just haven't pressured at all I mean like I said Wolves have looked like they've had an extra couple of players on the field of play because they just can't get near them and as soon as Fulham do get the ball you've got to give credit to Wolves though because positionally they're not giving any space to Fulham anywhere 
Well, you can hear one or two grumbles from the home supporters, but that could overread has found Tete now. Breaking into the penalty area, strikes it low across the face of goal and behind for a goal kick. Yeah, decent play from Tete. It looked like Jose Sar knew it was going wide. It looked pretty comfortable for the Wolves defenders. But good break, good burst forward. Fantastic ball out to the right-hand side from Carlinia. And Tete, you know, he fancied his chances. And it was almost, almost on target. But in the end, it went quite wide. And we are seeing the influence that Ruben Neves has on this Wolves team as well. Not just the opportunity a few moments ago, but really his passing range has been superb so far. He was given his debut as a 17-year-old under Lopetegui at Porto in the Portuguese League. And of course, he came to Wolves as a youngster with a big reputation and justified that in the championship. And at times, it did seem his Wolves career was coming to an end. But at the moment now, he's absolutely central to everything they do. Yeah, he's a fantastic player. He's so consistent. And he's one of those players that when you watch him, he makes football look easy. And he has been linked away. He was linked to Manchester United heavily last year. I think there was a couple of rumours of Tottenham Hotspur as well. But they're lucky to have kept a player like Ruben Neves. And fair play to him because I think he's shown amazing loyalty to Wolves. Because there's a lot of teams, I think, would like a player like Ruben Neves in their side. Only the two Manchester clubs have a better Premier League record than Fulham since the World Cup. Six wins, one draw and two defeats. But at the moment, Wolves are showing them up here as Kilman manages to hurdle a couple of challenges on the far side. Forward towards Nunez. He's got support from the goal scorer Sarabia. But in the end, Diop will win it back and go back towards Leno. First time lump right down the centre. But Vinicius losing out in the air to Kilman. The ball bounces it's caught in the lights for a couple of players for a moment before it's hacked into the air by Dawson and it's a very scrappy end to the first half here Reed pops it wide towards Deco Dover Reed he's challenged though by Cunha wants a free kick nothing given though by Michael Oliver and here is Neves again who sprays it wide to this near side and Dawson the early ball down the line on the right for Sarabia Reem is drawn out of the centre to try and make the challenge and Sarabia almost wriggles away from him Back towards Semedo. Four wait for the early cross, but it never arrives. Here is Sarabia once again. Back towards Neves and then all the way back towards Craig Dawson and Wolves. Go back to where they started with Jose Sar, the goalkeeper. Although it looked like the break was on, it was a fantastic ball from Craig Dawson down the right-hand side to Sarabia. Tim Ream came along across really, really well. But again, Wolves still look like they're in control. There will be a minimum of two added minutes at the end of the first half here at Craven Cottage on Talk Sport. And that's the cue for a number of people to head down to the very tight winding concourses here in the Stevenage Road stand at Craven Cottage as Diop finds Tete on towards Harrison Reed, who turns the ball in field. Vinicius goes down on the edge of the penalty area. Challenged by Dawson, half-hearted appeals for a penalty, nothing is given. Now it's clipped over the top. An early ball forward played by Cunha, but in the end, Jimenez has spun the other way and Fulham win the ball back. And here is Robinson now on this near side. Beckons Willian towards him and now gives the ball to the Brazilian. He comes in field, a back heel to release Pereira. A high cross towards the far post, over hit once again. That's been a feature for Fulham in the first half. And it's controlled by Nunez, who just plays the ball down the line, straight out of play, and Fulham have a throw in. Yeah, over hit there. It's happened a couple of times from Andreas Pereira down the left-hand side as well. But I think, you know, Wolves have just shown great discipline in, in their defence. I mean, just a second ago, Real Jimenez set the ball, and couldn't you try to play him in behind? I think he's asking a lot of him to have to get on the end of that. But I've been quite disappointed with Fulham's ball retention in this game because they've really not strung many passes together. Now Robinson down the left again, the cross in headed away by Neves. And it's brought clear, but Paulinha does well to outmuscle the challenge on this near side of Cunha. And here is Ream again for Fulham, right at the end of the first half here on Talksport. Robinson finding William down the left, a low cross in though is cut out by Lamina. But here is Ream with the fair hair and the ponytail for Fulham on this near side, finding Robinson. Robinson cuts inside. Now Pereira, Pereira nudged on towards William, onto the right foot, maybe could have let fly, but in the end, it's an untidy challenge from Lamina, and it's a free kick here for Fulham, in a central area, about 25 yards from goal. Probably the only thing 
But the second only thing Lamina's done wrong in this whole entire first half, apart from the back heel, he tried in his own half in the first few minutes. But I think that was clever from William. You know, he was always going down. He dragged the ball across the field. And it's a good position, but it's one of those ones, again, that is almost too far to shoot. But then it's an annoying one because if you want to loft it into the box, you'll probably go out for a goal kick. But I think Andreas Pereira has this in his locker. I really do. But to beat Jose Sar from this distance, you're going to have to score and strike it. A really good one. Well, the Brazilian here needs a top draw Brazilian free kick. Pereira curls it right, foot it over the wall and tipped over the top by Sar. And he almost delivered one as the half-time whistle goes. Not a bad effort, but as I mentioned, to beat the goalkeeper from this position, you're asking for a lot. But he got it on target, and it's unfortunate they weren't able to go and take the corner kick, and the ref blew the whistle for half-time. And not the story we anticipated here. Wolves leading by a goal to nil. Pablo Sarabia finishing off a fine move to open the scoring after 25 minutes. Fulham have huffed and puffed either side of the goal, but at the moment... Wolves look fairly comfortable. Half time, Fulham nil, Wolves won. Thank you, Hugh. And Fulham, having made those changes, I've seen Wolves get the second half underway here. So Sasa Lukic, the Serbian international sign from Torino in the transfer window, he's one of the players who has come on along with Manuel Solomon, who has scored late goals in the two previous games, wrapping up the win here against Forest and scoring the only goal at Brighton. And the players who've gone off, Bobby Dacordova, Reed, and Harrison Reed. Reed did pick up an early injury in the game, which may be an issue. So their team now is Leno in goal, Tete, Diop, Reem, and Robinson. Lukic and Paulinha in midfield. Carlos Vinicius is the striker, of course, now supported by Pereira, Willian, and Solomon. The Wolves team is Saar in goal, Semedo, Dawson, Kilman and Bueno, Neves, Nunez and Lamina in midfield. And the players up front, Sarabia, Jimenez and Cunha. And straight away, Solomon on the ball for Fulham, wide on the left-hand side, their left, as they look to attack the Hammersmith end away to our right in the second half. Back towards Palinha, and now slid wide to this near side, and Willian, he's got support from Lukic William though just looking to tease the Wolves player ahead of him and now Paulinho will strike it low from the edge of the penalty area right footed but it's one bounce into the arms of Jose Sa. yeah it was on for him to take a strike Paulinho but didn't really catch hold of it in the end and it was a really comfortable save from Jose Sa. but I said it in the first half it, it felt like Fulham needed to do something I felt like maybe tactically I mean but we do could overread. I don't think he had the best of halves, but it's never easy when you get pulled at half time. That is like the worst feeling from a footballer to when you get taken off at half time. Harris to me, Reed maybe had this, an injury, but I can understand why Marco Silva's done that because they need to do something. Now Cunha forward towards Jimenez for Wolves on the edge of the penalty area. Cunha again, square to Neves. Neves just checks back away from Pereira with the drag back and plays it wide to Semedo on the right hand side. Semedo's got support from Sarabia who scored his first Wolves goal after 23 minutes here tonight. Now Lamina again, all the way back to the halfway line, and Kilman. Kilman lofted wide to Bueno, just in front of us. He can now look to attack Tete, but he maybe just needed Nunez to go forward on the overlap, but in the end he held his run, but now he has the ball, and it's clipped on towards Cunha, and Cunha claimed he was body checked there by Robinson and Michael Oliver the referee agrees and it will be a free kick for Wolves in the sort of area where Neves can hit them. I think it was very clever play from Cunha because I'm not quite sure Anthony really is and um, Robinson is very late and I can understand why the referee's given that because it was really sloppy from Anthony Robinson and Cunha you know sold that as he did in the first half with the free kick in the middle of the park. Just nipped around the corner there by Cunha and I think he waited for Robertson to arrive and then make the move forward into him to almost create the body check. But there is a four-man committee over this free kick for Wolves. Three minutes into the second half on Talk Sport, leading by a goal to nil. Neves, of course, is prominent amongst them. Kilman just standing in front of the Fulham wall to try and obscure their view. And it's Neves who will hit this right-footed Sarabia should be the decoy the left foot but you never know but we've seen Neves score from this sort of range in the past 
and it's Neves who clips it high to the far post Kilman with the header over the top it was a free header in the end and he managed to get the whip on it but not quite the height Craig Dawson was actually free on the far post as well and it looked like that ball was actually supposed to be for him because it was a conversation that happened between him and Ruben Neves but it was, unfo it was unlucky in the end for Max Kilman because it wasn't a bad effort no one was opposing him putting him under pressure and it was unlucky now Ream challenges Jimenez and it's played forward by Robinson but so many balls forward for Fulham have floundered on the rock that has been Mario Lamina for Wolves so far now Neves again wide towards the far side and the challenge on Cunha and it will be a throw in for Fulham and Ruben Neves has played every single minute so far under Lopetegui and he's clearly someone who has a great deal of trust in him as Lamina picks up another loose ball and Nunez back towards Lamina and now wide to Bueno down the left hand side early cross into the penalty area headed away by Ream and flying in to try and apply the finish was Cunha but Ream got there first now Solomon on the far side under pressure and in the end he's done well to win a goal kick although the Wolves fans just behind him in the pot the end wanted a corner yeah again it's been so, so much turnover from Fulham Anthony Robinson down that left hand side it all comes from there he's given away the ball twice which allows Wolves to come come back at them so been quite disappointing for Fulham I don't think it's been the best quality game but I'm certainly sure Fulham need to play better than this because they've been really poor I think they're giving away the ball too cheaply no one even opposing them you could see William before was getting quite frustrated but he needs to get himself in the game as well now Jimenez down the left hand side for Wolves just in front of us back in field to Lamina a reminder they are underway over on Talk Sport 2 with coverage of the second day's play in the second test in Wellington gets underway at 9.30 download the Talk Sport app and you can swipe between the coverage there and the coverage here now Jimenez looking to chase a ball down the centre but his route to goal is cut off by Diop and Tete plays it forward straight out of play and it will be a throw in for Wolves on this near side and Fulham do look out of sorts they didn't play particularly well last week at Brighton got away with it but no such luck here so far this evening now as soon as they have the ball they're just giving it away and now an opportunity for Wolves to try and get a second goal and the ball just snakes wide from Jimenez of Leno's far post 24,000 399 is the crowd and if anyone thought here that Wolves were going to come out and try and sit on their lead they were wrong yeah it's a fantastic ball from Nunez I'd expected Jimenez to do a lot better there it's almost like he takes his eye off the ball and that's a that's a great chance I'd have at least expected him to hit the target from there absolutely but I was saying you know Fulham just haven't got hold of this game at all and they're giving away the ball far too cheaply Maybe Marco Silva was right not to get too carried away with talk of a European campaign next season. Now Diop, high cross into the penalty area and coming a long way to claim was Jose Saar. He was caught there by Vinicius as he fell to earth and Saar has hoofed the ball straight out of play on the far side to claim he needs treatment. I'll have to look at this again because from this angle it didn't look like there was really much in this. I mean... Carlos Vinicius has every right to go for the ball. Yeah, there's nothing in that for me at all. At all. There's maybe a gloved hand across the chest or possibly a dig in the ribs from Vinicius, but Jose Sarr. For me, I think he's made too much of that. You know, he's then kicked the ball out of play. I'll be surprised here if Fulham actually give it back to him I'll be very surprised because obviously sportsmen likely would do that but you can see what the Fulham fans think of this maybe they'll play maybe they won't no they're giving the ball back to Wolves and they've been booed by their own fans for doing that but I think as much of that is for the antics there of Jose Sarr I mean he's still holding his chest and you know it's a weird one because for me Carlos Vinicius doesn't even touch him barely and Nunez chasing a long ball forward but the ball strikes him on the back as he slips 
as he tries to recover now Tate brings it forward Nunez has recovered his position almost won back by Cunha but here is William moving in field for Fulham again poked forward towards Vinicius but read well by Kilman and Wolves will try and break Cunha now in space found by Kilman down the left hand side Jimenez waits inside the penalty area Cunha looks to go himself tried to take on this at the off and it was the wrong choice yeah Diop does very very well there you can see what Cunha was trying but this game is is completely open in the midfield now Vinicius wide to the far side and Solomon steaming forward on the overlap as Robinson for Fulham a low ball into the penalty area looking for Pereira defended well by Dawson at the near post now Wolves win it back their turn to attack over the halfway line and there's a challenge from behind there which won the ball from Lukic the Wolves player Matias Cunha has gone down there are two Wolves players down but Fulham play on here here is Robinson with a cross into the penalty area deflected as far as William now it's gathered by Lukic it goes for a delicate curler which is blocked by Neves now Jimenez is down and Michael Oliver eventually stops play with two Wolves players prostrate on the playing surface yeah this is not something you see very often but if I'm being honest I can't see anything in either of these tackles at all and it's an interesting thing to try and do early on in the, in the second half you know, I'm not doubting they might have got picked up some type of injury, but from what I can see, there's nothing in it. I mean, they're going to try to slow the game down as much as they can, Wolves, but for me, there's not really much in any either of these tackles on Cunha. And the other one, Paulinha, you know, he wins the ball, so I'm not quite sure. It was Sarabia caught by Paulinha initially, play carried on, and then Cunha went down under the challenge of Lukic. And on both occasions, Michael Oliver allowed play to continue. The Wolves players are talking to him, Ruben Neves and Craig Dawson in particular. And there is a degree of ill feeling out there at the moment with 55 minutes played on Talk Sport. Fulham nil, Wolves won. With Now Sports, don't forget that with Now Sports you can stream all the Sky Sports action like this game live right now for 11.99. No contract. Search Now Sports. I think it was good refereeing as well for Michael Oliver because for me there was nothing in either of the tackles you know on Sarabia and Paulinia I mean Cunha looks like he he could well be injured we'll have to wait and see but they didn't really look like there was much in it at all well it's a long long delay here and the concern is about Matthias Cunha the player on loan from Atletico Madrid he was the recipient of the second challenge by Lukic and again play was allowed to continue the Wolves players Dawson and Neves have been chatting here to Michael Oliver the referee for some time and this Pereira now joins in Jose Sarr is having words with Carlos Vinicius presumably in Portuguese the thing is they're under no obligation to kick the ball out of play you know Wolves actually were on the attack as well and then obviously it broke down and then Fulham ended up getting the ball and I think Jimenez ended up just whacking it out of play so that they can get some time but you can hear what the fans think of this and you know maybe Cunha might have to go off maybe Adama Traore will come on but this is quite a long stoppage and the delay continues this Sunday Talk Sport brings you exclusive radio commentary of Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury live from Saudi Arabia coverage on the night will start at 7pm on Talk Sport 2 before switching over to Talk Sport at 9 p.m. for the main event. Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury this Sunday, live and exclusive, free to listen to, only on Talk Sport. We'll continue our build up in Fight Night, live with Adam Catterall at the end of the game here tonight, with the cricket continuing live and exclusive over on Talk Sport 2. And Marco Silva is having words with Darren England, the fourth official, saying, look, they need to get him off and now he's gone down again they managed to get Matthias Cunha to his feet and as soon as he got stood up he crumpled to the turf and I think Michael Oliver is calling for the stretcher here I'm not quite sure why the stretcher wasn't called about five minutes ago because you know obviously the fans are becoming hostile clearly he has some type of injury that he picked up maybe his ankle but the stretcher should have been out there way sooner to be able to you know see the players okay get him onto the stretcher because as soon as he put weight on it Clearly, he can't put weight on his ankle. Adama so. Traore will be on very soon. And don't forget, live football tomorrow lunchtime is on Talk Sport 2. Coventry against Sunderland with Ian Danter 
and Courtney Sweetman Kirk. Game day live on Talk Sport from one o'clock tomorrow. No early kickoff in the Premier League with Adrian Durham. All the goals as they go in. Leeds against Saints on Talk Sport 2 with Joe Shannon and Chris Uelamo from 3 o'clock and Palace against Liverpool on Talk Sport from 7.45 with Sam Matterface and Scott Minter. And now... The change will eventually be made here. And Matthias Cunha has been carried across towards the cottage on this near side. And he looks, in fairness to him, he looks to be in a good deal of pain here. Yeah, and it's not good. You know, initially it looked like there wasn't much in it, but clearly Cunha must be injured because he looks like he's in quite a lot of pain. I understand why the Fulham fans would feel like it's taken an eternity for him to get off the field of play, but the duty of the of care of the player is the most important thing. But I think it's just taking way too long for the Fulham fans and them to get him off the field of play. But there will be a lot of additional minutes at the end of this at the end of this half. Well he waved to the bench as soon as he went down, which often suggests it can be a bad one. Adama Traore will be coming on to replace him. Scored twice in the Premier League in October, but he's a player who at times has flattered to deceive for Wolves this season, but in terms of them going forward, he's not been alone in that. No, and I think Adama Traore is one of those players that I used to really enjoy watching. He had that impact, and I just think he's, he's a very strange footballer because he never seems to quite impact games in the way that he should. You know, he went to Barcelona. I was starting for Barcelona in the full-back position and now comes back to Wolves and can't get in the starting eleven, And that, for me, is quite strange, and I understand it because he doesn't really have much consistency. Well, he's on the ball now, down the right-hand side, and on a chilly night we can see his heavily oiled biceps glistening from here. I thought you were talking about Hugh Wootencroft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, here's an opportunity for Wolves to bring it forward again with Traore. He was always immaculate when he's on the television. The cross in from Traore, headed away by Tate in the end. He's talking about television on Sunday, maybe a bow tie at Wembley. Maybe, yeah. Well, it's a big game, isn't it, Sunday? Newcastle United versus Manchester United is going to be a great game. They still haven't discovered the new James Bond, have they? <laughs> 61 minutes played, Fulham nil, Wolves won here on Talk Sport at Craven Cottage. Now Lamina wins it back and finds Sarabia, good ball from him. Traore waits on the edge of the penalty area, scooped by Sarabia towards the left-hand side, brought down well by Nunez, Nunez has got Bueno in support, but it's pulled back to Lamina to hit it, and he was closed down by Pereira as he did so, and it sliced off the outside of his right boot into those Wolves fans in the Putney end. Yeah, not the greatest of efforts from Lamina, but again, he read the play really, really well, was able to play the ball inside to Nunez, and you could see Wolves picking their moments of when to attack, but I think it's mostly down to the fact that Fulham just haven't looked organised, they're giving away the ball so cheaply that it's not really causing Wolves any problems. They haven't caused any problems in behind, Carlos Vinicius hasn't, Williams out on his right-hand side, he had a couple of moments where he's gone inside, tried a little bit of trickery, but they seem too far apart, the distances between the midfield and the front line now a break into the penalty area on the far side from Solomon but it's closed down by Dawson who just plays it straight out of play and it will be a throw in for Fulham 10 yards from the corner flag on the far side Wolves with 52% possession so far and Fulham have had more shots and more efforts on target but it just feels as though Wolves have used the ball better yeah, absolutely. I think they've always looked like they're in control, Wolves. But having said that, Fulham have got players that can turn the game in the blink of an eye. But I think the substitutions and Solomon, you know, he scored two goals off the bench this season. That's something they're going to look to capitalise on. But other than that, they haven't really looked threatening at all. When they have the ball, they're given away too cheaply. And Wolves are just able to bank up behind the ball and pick their moments. Now Solomon again, back towards... Robinson, the cross in though, headed away unchallenged by Neves. But Fulham try and win it back. Robinson with a strong challenge on Traore on the far side. And now it's wide towards Solomon again, who cuts in field onto the right foot. With the cut! Oh, what a brilliant goal! Manor Solomon off the bench once again with an absolute cracker for 
for Fulham and he's brought Craven Cottage to life. A team lacking inspiration sees the Israeli international come up with a storming goal and just when it seemed that Wolves were soaking everything up, Manuel Solomon with a moment of inspiration and it's 1-1. I said it about a minute before that Fulham do have players that can change the game in the blink of an eye. Fantastic play to body check Anthony Robinson, body check to Dama Traore, Solomon comes inside, great conviction and he knew it was in the back of the net as soon as it left his foot, cuts inside, perfect curler into the far corner and game on but Wolves have always looked in control but fair play to Solomon, he mentioned it, he's always comes off the bench, I think he was unfortunate he didn't get the start tonight, I think he deserved to because he's in that fine goal scoring form off the bench but fair play to him, he's come on and he's made an impact. Well, an Israeli flag has been unfurled just in front of us in the Stephenish Road stand and the player on loan from Shakhtar Donetsk scoring for the third successive Premier League game. And Julian Lopetegui stands there, arms thrust deep into pockets. Just when it seemed his team had gathered Fulham's measure, it is 1-1 now with 25 minutes to play. Yeah, I mean, Adama Traore in that situation as well, I mean, he's probably one of the strongest players in the Premier League, got completely body-checked from Anthony Robinson, and that started that initial play, but Solomon, great finish, and it's game on. You know, I said it before the game, these games don't usually have a lot of goals in them. In their last five meetings, you know, Wolves have got the better of them. Three wins, and there's been two draws as well. So, but I still think Wolves need to keep doing exactly what they have been because they've looked in control. But certainly now, Solomon's got that goal. The full of fans, you can feel it, you can hear it in here. Well, the crowd have finally come to life here on the banks of the Thames. 65 minutes played, 1 1. Jimenez, though, has been fouled by the corner flag on the far side by Robinson, and it will be a free kick for Wolves and they have the opportunity to load the penalty area. Yeah, good positioning. This is a perfect situation, you know, almost like a corner. You know, Ruben Neves has the perfect delivery as well, so this could be quite dangerous. And Craig Dawson, you can see him and Max Kilman having conversations every single time there's a set piece on what they're going to do, and I think they've worked on this, obviously, at the training ground to see, and if we look to see Craig Dawson make that run around the back post pretty late on. Ruben Neves over the free kick, curled high towards Dawson with the header and it's over the top, it took a deflection on the way through and riffled the roof of the netting. Absolutely, and you can see he's always looking for it, Craig Dawson, he's clearly the player that they're searching for and he almost looks like he's not interested at all and then makes picks a moment, good defending in the end from Diop. Corner kick on this near side, Hugo Bueno, the young Spaniard will take it. And it's another out, so he flicked on by Lamina and headed over the top of his own crossbar by Vinicius onto the roof of the netting once again, and it will be another Wolves corner. Good ball from Bueno, good set piece, and it was almost in by from Lamina, and it was a good deflection over the bar. Bueno once again on this near side. Another outswinging corner, Reem rising to head the ball away. Nunez heads it back towards Bueno, but hit coming field and the ball goes straight out of play. And it will be a throw into Fulham by their own corner flag on this near side there right. 67 minutes played on Talksport. Fulham 1, Wolves 1. The second day of the second test in Wellington will be underway shortly. Over on Talksport 2. And if you download the app, you can swipe between... The early stages of day two with Brooks and Root looking to add to their mammoth stand yesterday. And also the football here which is set up for an intriguing final quarter with Fulham equalising really out of nothing as Pereira has now been caught by Neves and it will be a free kick to Fulham just inside their own half in a central area. Yeah, this is a good opportunity now that Fulham can get their foothold into the game. I think it's amazing what can happen with the goal. But I still think Wolves have always looked in control. But I still think they need to offer a little bit more going forward. I think the quality from Fulham, when they've got it down the sideline, I mean, talking about quality, that touch from Andreas Pereira was absolutely brilliant to bring it out the air. 60-yard ball, diagonal ball, and he just pulls it down, brings it down on the dime. But other than that, I feel like when they're getting balls 
in wide areas, their quality into the box just hasn't been good. We saw it in the first two, three minutes of the game when Anthony Robinson got the ball down the left-hand side and he kind of looked like he underhit it. It fell to Carlos Vinicius, but the deliveries today I don't think have been up to standard of what we've seen from Fulham this year. Now Lamina facing his own goal, forced wide by Vinicius. The clearance is helped on by Semedo towards the halfway line. Reem looks to quickly play the ball forward and now a free kick has been given for a challenge on Nunez from Lukic and Wolves take it quickly slip wide to the far side and Traore but Robinson ate up the ground there slid in to make the challenge and it will be a throw into Wolves on the far side great free kick from Ruben Nevers completely caught the Fulham midfield off guard played a nice ball through the lines and it almost got Adama Traore in but Anthony Robinson recovered very very well and the score Fulham 1 Wolves 1 on Talk Sport with Car Finance 24-7 search Car Finance 24-7 today now to work wide towards the far side again and Traore who has done very little since coming on apart from being knocked off the ball in the build up to the equalising goal and he's given the ball away a couple of times yeah and I think that's what frustrates a lot of Wolves fans because he looks like you know he has a lot to offer but he just doesn't impact the games in I think the way that we, we know he should be you know, it's interesting, when he went to Barcelona, he did relatively well, but for Wolves, if he's going to be an impact player off the bench, he needs to get involved in it, and I think it goes to show you, it doesn't matter how big and strong you look, Anthony Robinson is almost, you know, more or less half the size of Adama Traore and barged him off the ball for that goal. Semedo with a rash challenge on Solomon on the far side, it will be a free kick for Fulham, but they don't do too much with it, but... Wolves eventually have a throw in on this near side and as you can see the home fans around us not too impressed with the decision 20 minutes to play on Chalk Sport Fulham 1 Wolves 1 the point would be much more used to Fulham I suppose at the top of the table it would keep Wolves just peering over their shoulders but I think Wolves will be disappointed not to have the three points in the bag already don't forget, Sunday, we've got the big fight in the evening, in the afternoon. Manchester United against Newcastle, the Carabao Cup final. Full 30 kickoff, Adrian Durham live from Wembley, leading our team with Sam Matterface, Stuart Pearce and Lee Clark. As Lukic comes forward now for Fulham over the halfway line. Right towards their goal scorer, Solomon, cutting in field from the left. Pereira now, he can strike it right-footed. And he caught hold of it with plenty of pace, but it was always going over the top. Lukic has come into this game and it's taken him, you know, 20 minutes or so to find his feet. But that was a nice play, you know. He found himself in between the lines, plays it to Andres Pereira. But you can see, I think the better option there would have been to play to William, who was on the right-hand side. But we know Andres Pereira has that in his locker. He can hit the target from there and he'll be disappointed it went sailing over the bar. Break it now for Wolves again after a challenge on Sarabia. Neves heads it forward quickly. Currently Fulham 1, Wolves 1 for the latest odds. Head to Labrooks right now, can back Fulham at 3-1. to one, Back Wolves to win at 11-4. to four, Back the draw at 4-3 to three on all thanks to Labrooks. Play at labrooks.com, 18+, plus, begambleaware.org. And once again, there is a degree of acrimony around the two technical areas. And Ruben Neves is having a very animated conversation with Marco Silva. Yeah, I think as well, you know, Andres Pereira, I think, picked up a booking there, but I think it's more to do with the referee trying to get a foothold of the game because it looked like it was getting a bit spicy, you know, and they want to take that out of the game a little bit. So, not quite sure what Ruben Neves and Marco Silva, it looks like it's all in good, good yes down there, but Andres Pereira's picked up a yellow card and Sarabia sold that quite well, and I think Marco Silva is uh, making that known to him. Yeah, and Sarabia's given him some back as well. I'm just watching the replay here. Saravia received the ball. Well, he was caught. He was, but there's, you know, he's not really. It's not enough to make you have to go down like that. And I think, like I said, the ref has booked Andres Pereira based upon the fact he doesn't want those types of things happening. The fans are becoming a little bit more hostile. You can feel the atmosphere really building. And every single time there's a situation, the fans are getting involved. So, which makes sense to me, but I just don't think that's a booking. Wolves are about to make a change. Two changes. Daniel Pedence and Joao Matinho are coming on for them. 17 minutes to play. 1-1 here on Talk Sport at Craven Cottage. 
what I like about what Lopetegui's doing is I think this Wolves team differs than under Bruno Larger because they won't they used go to down, set will up. No, I don't think they will, and I think they've got their, there's no team is too good to go down. I'm not saying that they're they're playing amazing football, but they look good on the ball. They have quality. You know, the players they're bringing in now, Prudence and Martinia, they can impact this game, and that can make them win this game. They're not shutting up shop, waiting, you know, for Fulham to end up coming onto them. They're ready to go. Now Sarabia was lost out on the edge of his own penalty area. Polino with the challenge. Polino has then bowled over by Lamina. Michael Oliver has given a free kick to Fulham about 25 yards out, just right of centre. We've seen so many free kicks like this in this game. It's been un incredible, really. And the delivery just hasn't been good enough. So it's certainly getting a little bit scrappy. You know, Lamina, I'm not quite sure there was much in that. But it's almost like any type of contact now, it's going to be given as a free kick. But we know Andres Pereira has a great set piece on him. He puts a fantastic ball in, similar to Ruben Neves, a lot of pace on it. So this could be really dangerous. And Pereira will whip this free kick, right footed, high towards the far post. Bodies go tumbling inside the penalty area, appeals for a penalty, Michael Oliver has given a goal kick the Fulham players swarm around him once again but he's been told just to wait and Michael Souls with the VAR may be taking a second look at this I thought the ball was oh was there a shove there by Lamina on Paulinha at the far post as the ball came in I mean there is I think it was a bit deep for Andreas Pereira but in that situation as soon as you raise your hand you're asking for trouble I think well, I, really, I really do think you are. I mean, I don't think there was much in it, but we've seen this is the consistency with the referee in. We've seen that given, haven't we? We saw Bruno Fernandes last night, barely touches, goes down, and he, Lamina has pushed him, has pushed Carlinia. And in the box, in the 18-yard box this season, as soon as you push a player, it's usually a penalty. Sarabia and Nunez are going off four walls to be replaced by Pedence and João Martinho. And it's not clear to us here inside the stadium if they are still undergoing a VAR check here. To me, it doesn't look like no. they are. But, again, I think it would have been soft to give it, but Lamina did shove Palinia. So, I don't know, we've seen them given this year. Well, plays back underway. Here is Dawson for Wolves on the edge of his own penalty area. There were one or two interesting penalties in the Europa League and the Conference League last night, but sometimes you get games refereed in different ways across Europe. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, now Vinicius has gone down, clutching his face on the far side. Again, play continues. Michael Oliver is allowing a lot to go here, but he's doing his best to try and keep a flow in the game. Now Pedence, challenged though by Tete. Vinicius is back on his feet on the far side. William, who has been quiet tonight for Fulham, back to Lukic, and here is Ream. 13 minutes to play. 1 1 the scoreline here at Craven Cottage on Talk Sport. Wolves ahead for a long time in the game, thanks to Pablo Sarabia, but the equaliser for Manuel Solomon, and Fulham have been the better side since. Yeah, the momentum has changed a little bit since they got the goal. I mean, I think the fans have come alive a little bit more as well. Every single time there's a decision, they're on the referee's back, they're on the referee's case. And we saw Wolves were looking to almost waste time, you know, with Jose Sarr in the beginning of the second half and those types of things, you know, the dark arts of football where you have to have the game management. But I think Wolves, at times, have looked the better team. But you can see the momentum just changing a little bit. But well, we've just seen there that the, the concentration and the giveaways from Fulham have been really poor tonight. I don't think they've handled the ball very, very well. Now it's gathered on this near side by Charles Martinho. Pedence back towards Neves again. And he's got great vision in this Wolves team to change the point of the attack and bring Semedo into it on the far side, just in front of the technical areas. But Semedo goes all the way back to Jose Sarr. Big boot forward from him, taken down well on the chest by Jimenez. But it's cleared away by Robinson as he looked to release Traore. Now Vinicius, nice touch to find Pereira moving forward now. Wide towards Vinicius, left-hand side of the penalty area. William waits for the cross. In the end, the cross is deflected behind off Dawson for a corner. It's a prime example there of two centre-forwards. One at one end that couldn't keep hold of the ball, 
which allowed Fulham to then go straight back down the other end. It was a great touch from Carlos Vinicius. I've been quite critical of him during this game, and that was a really good touch to set Andreas Pereira off. When the ball came back to Carlos Vinicius, I think he just had it to have a little bit more pace and intensity to get the ball back. 12 minutes to play, 1-1 on Chalk Sport at Craven Cottage. Andres Pereira with the corner on the far side. It will be an in-swinger. Paulinho makes the run towards the near post. It's beyond him. Green challenging, but it's headed away well by Neves, and it will be a throw into Fulham on this near side. And if you were to pick a winning goal at the moment, you would imagine it would bulge the Wolves net, but this has been a second half of twists and turns. Absolutely, it's certainly heated up in the second half. You know, a lot of tackles flying in, both teams really going at it. I think it's great to see because sometimes in these types of fixtures, anything is kind of possible. You know, one team might try and sit back, but both teams, we saw the substitutions that Lopetegui made in Podence and Martinho. He's trying to win this game. Well, the ball bobbled out on this near side. Fulham were convinced it should have been a throw into them, but it was given Wolves' his way. Bueno clears downfield. Let's check in in Wellington for the first time this evening. Day two of the cricket. Here is Guy Swindles. And England have lost a wicket, and it's Harry Brook, only adding two to his overnight score. He's gone for 186, caught and bowled superbly by Henry. Joe Root, those six, has brought up the 300 partnership. That has now been broken. England 3 2 3 for four. Thanks, Guy. Commentary continues over on Talk Sport 2. Download the app and swipe between the coverage there and the game here as the crossing from Rukic, Palinia or rather Pereira goes for a spectacular overhead kick but fails to make contact now Robinson wide towards Solomon a deep cross swirled in by him but it was beyond Lukic who was waiting at the far post and behind for a goal kick yeah good ball into the box from Lukic Andres Pereira he tried the extravagant and it didn't quite come off but you can see Fulham have certainly stepped up a bit these last 10 or 15 minutes since the goal they look like they're on the front foot kind of how they needed to start the game but I still don't think they've had enough quality but with the fans on their side and the atmosphere definitely building Wolves just need to keep seeing out this game the best way they know how for me both teams in action in midweek live on Talk Sport 2 Fulham against Leeds in the FA Cup on Tuesday Liverpool against Wolves in the Premier League on Wednesday both live on Talk Sport 2 on Talk Sport on Tuesday Bristol City against Manchester City and we have Arsenal against Everton another step in the title race live on Talk Sport on Wednesday as Jimenez has been caught here by William it will be a free kick for Wolves midway inside the Fulham half after yet more Fulham carelessness in the midfield that's an example of I think how Fulham's night's gone William knows you know it was a really heavy touch from him these things happened which made him having to make the tackle it was a really poor first touch and you know Ro Jimenez goes down and it's a free kick in a similar position that we've seen most of the night with these free kicks João Martinho and Hugo Bueno are over the free kick for Wolves every single outfield player is inside the Fulham half Bueno curls it high towards the far post headed away by Paulinho and it stays in play Vinicius plays it long downfield and the ball actually spins in field almost finds Andreas Pereira who trumples dramatically to the turf looking for a free kick and doesn't get one now a high ball played over the top again for Walls but Diop rises above Jimenez to clear and it's back towards Ream on the edge of the penalty area Ream with the back pass towards Leno who has not had a huge amount to do in the second half it must be said and his ball towards this near side doesn't find Lukic straight out of play it will be a throw in for Walls and Fulham are about to make another change it's quite interesting because since Prudence and Gian Martino has come on, Raul Jimenez has actually stayed higher up the field and Wolves have looked to switch play a couple of times, which has actually been maybe because of the types of players in Prudence and Martino being underneath him, he feels more confident to do that. Harry Wilson coming on for Fulham and Willian is heading off and we gave him the big build-up, Willian, before kick-off but it's not quite happened for him tonight. No, and these things happen, you know, some days just don't, no matter what you try, it doesn't work out. I don't think there's been any unbelievable performances from Fulham tonight. It's just one of those games where if they can get out of here with a, with a point or three, they'll be happy with that because it's been a really poor performance from Fulham. But I also think it's the standards that they've set themselves. You know, they've been absolutely brilliant this season. 
and Diego Costa will be on very shortly for Wolves now Diop hooks it forward over the top and it's straight out of play from Wilson Declan McCarthy our producer has come up with a great stat he spends his Friday evenings on the internet looking for stats Manuel Solomon the first Israeli player to score in three consecutive Premier League games since Ronnie Rosenthal in November 1992 the first season of the Premier League and that was after he hit the crossbar with an open goal at Villa Park <laughs> fantastic start well done Deck Ralph Jimenez heads off and Diego Costa comes on and as a former Chelsea man he gets a warm welcome from the Fulham crowd you know that he's a type of player as well though that will love that yeah, he, he loves drives being off the of that villa. I mean he's already just swung at Diop as he's come into the game like that guy always plays on the edge and I think if you change that about him he wouldn't be Diego Costa well his last Premier League goal came in May of 2017 the last of 20 for Chelsea when they won the title that season and he scored 16 in the six seasons since not always been fit it must be said yeah you can see why they took that you know they took the opportunity to sign him why not why wouldn't you so hasn't really done much at Wolves but he's always going to be that player that's going to come in and try and do something and I think this substitution completely makes sense you know they're trying to win the game and he can do that Neves forward now towards Costa it was cut out by Ream and here is Robinson in towards Pereira once again and now Polina midway inside the Fulham half tries to pick out Wilson on this near side but Bueno read the pass and now Lamina plays it forward but you'll never find Pedence with a jab like that from inside his own half and it's gathered by Diop and we have five minutes to play on TalkSport 1-1 yeah, I think Lamina's had a really good game, you know, he's given away the ball a couple of times in his second half, but I think he's looked pretty comfortable, he's always looked bright, and I think with the players that have come into this game, they're real good footballers, you know, they've got, they're smart, they can retain the ball, having said that, Prudence just giving it away, but that's always the way, but I think this Wolves team, they have a lot of quality within their team, and they're actually a good team to watch play. I think Fulham have been really underwhelming tonight, haven't really got going, but there's still a lot of time in this game. There's probably going to be maybe five or six minutes at the end based upon that injury to Cunha. So there's still opportunities and chances for either team to maybe get the win. The Wolves look like a side who are building something under Lopetegui, even in the midst of a relegation battle. They've been drifting for a couple of years, it must be said, but there is much more purpose about them here. And while they still don't have an authentic goal threat that's something he'll look to rectify maybe in the transfer window in the coming years should he get that far now Robinson wide on the far side the Fulham left binding Solomon Solomon back towards Robinson again but an excellent challenge by Semedo to win the ball cleanly and he can now play it forward towards Diego Costa beaten to it by Ream in a battle of the veterans but here is Pedence back towards Neves Neves with the ball over the top encouraging Adama Traore to run but he won't get that straight out of play for a throw into Fulham yeah nothing in that really but one thing I do love is every single time that Tim Ream goes near the ball the Fulham fans just shout out Ream it's actually quite incredible but I mean he's a player again that looked like his career at Fulham was going to days were going to be numbered then he gets picked for the US men's national team for the World Cup and I think you have to have that breed of experience within the team as well and I think he's been brilliant this year for Fulham well he's missed only two minutes in the Premier League the last time Fulham were in the Premier League only played seven times this is a completely different Fulham team though isn't it I mean I was one of those people that said you know for sure they'd go down now a free kick taken for Fulham on the halfway line by Pereira but too quickly and they'll have to come back and Lavina just gets in the way of the ball being returned back towards the original place and then the ball hits Pedence as well and the Wolves players are saying look you know we just happen to be in the way that's clever but then sold that very very well because he stuck out his foot but I was saying you know I was one of those people that said Fulham I couldn't see I didn't see them having enough but now they're potentially you know they're in fifth if they were to win tonight go equal with Newcastle it's absolutely incredible really well they've got 38 points they're not going down here is Wilson now Solomon Polinia with a raking ball back towards Wilson again on this near side he's got support from Tate. early cross into the penalty area beyond Polinia appeals for handball in fact a corner kick in the end from Pereira but it's gone behind for a goal kick 
yeah, you could see that it looked like it almost skimmed the back of Craig Dawson's head. But good switch of play from Fulham. They're really putting the pressure on. And it was good play in the end. You know, Wolves looked like they had it pretty comfortably covered. Luton, the FA Cup, coming up next at home for Fulham. And two London derbies they look forward to. A trip to Brentford. And then Arsenal here. Very big games at this stage of the season. Now Bueno. Challenged by Wilson, but Bueno comes away from him far too easily. Tries to find Pedence. Stab back in field towards Bueno, having a shirt pulled there by Lukic. But he's done really well, the youngster, to release Pedence now. Down the left-hand side, attacking the penalty area. The ball in, though, is a disappointment, although Leno does bobble it. But he gathers at the second attempt under no real pressure. Absolutely fantastic play from Bueno. You know, we're almost coming up to the 90th minute mark. And he had no right to come away with, with the ball. And he kept hold of it, plays a nice ball to Pedence, and it was quite wasteful in the end. I don't think either of them were on the same page because Costa didn't make the run. And it looked like Pedence was trying to find him. But good play, absolutely brilliant play from Bueno. 45 seconds of normal time to play. 1-1 one, one here at Torx Board and Bueno now gets too friendly with Wilson and it will be a free kick for Fulham on this near side a reminder, talk sport 2 for the early stages of the second day of the second test in Wellington Harry Brook has already departed after Joe Root brought up the 300 partnership with a 6 now Semedo wide towards Traore on the far side he goes to ground again challenged by Robinson and fouled by Robinson it will be a Wolves free kick yeah, you can see the frustration building. I think Wolves in this second half have tried to take a sting out of the game quite a lot. You know, we've seen a couple of substitutions. We've seen them wasting the time running it down. Eight more minutes. Eight minutes of added time and Fulham going forward now. On the far side with Solomon. Square to Lukic. Lukic further square to Wilson. Now Polinia. Wolves are very deep here. Solomon again, slips it wide to Pereira on the left, low ball into the penalty area, blocked by Dawson, appeals for handball, nothing given, and Dawson clears downfield again, but straight out of play. Yeah, we knew there was going to be a lot of additional time from Cunha being out injured, so I expected five or six, but eight does also make sense, but, you know, you can see the crowd really feeling it, you know, Andre Pereira gets down that left-hand side, tries to find Carlos Vinicius, and he doesn't quite connect the pass, but Wolves are going to have to see out this game now because Fulham are going to keep coming at them. Throw in from Robinson, but it's quickly cleared, and now Costa will try and win it. He's been pushed over on the halfway line by Ream. It did seem that Costa almost invited the contact and then catapulted himself forward, but that's the dark arts of centre forward players you would know yeah that was that was I never did anything like that mind but that was I'm only joking that was very clever from Diego Costa because he had no one around him it was almost 1v4 and he sells the free kick and Timurim goes into the back of him now Neves wide to the far side and Semedo fight night live from Saudi Arabia coming up at the end of this game previewing the big fight on Sunday Fury against Paul live and exclusive and free to air on Talk Sport as Traore picks up a loose ball on the far side of the right he'll try and take on Robinson to the byline delivers a high hanging cross into the penalty area Pedence rising but it's cleared away by Tate. now Bueno on the left looking to go beyond Wilson he delivers a great cross into the penalty area headed away by Ream under extreme pressure now Lamina nods it down Neves wide towards Traore again but he's unable to gather and it will be a throw into Fulham yeah, Bueno, I think he's been, had an excellent second half. It was a fantastic delivery, but none other than Tim Ream to there to defend it and head it away. So, yeah, I mean, they're going to keep coming at them, to be fair. Wolves haven't sat off. I like this Wolves under Julian Lopetegui. I feel like, you know, before they would just bank up, trying to get out of here of a point, but they're still trying to push. And, again, there's still enough time in this game. It could go genuinely either way. We are two minutes into eight added minutes here on Talk Sport. Fulham won. Wolves won on Talk Sport. And we have more Premier League action coming up tomorrow. Three o'clock on Talk Sport 2. The big one at the bottom leads against Southampton. Then an evening kickoff, Saturday night football on Talk Sport. Crystal Palace against Liverpool. Coventry against Sunderland gets the game underway. 12.30 on Talk Sport 2 in the Championship as Wilson goes down on this near side. He was just given a shove by Bueno. And it will be a free kick to Fulham. I am surprised that 
Fulham haven't looked to bring on Dan James instead of Carlos Vinicius because, you know, he's, he's not had any type of impact on this game. And Dan James will stretch the defence. He's very, very quick. So I'm surprised that they haven't brought him off the bench to, to impact the game. But now Paulinho finding Wilson on the edge of the penalty area. He can come in field onto the left foot. Wilson continues, now plays it wide to the right. And Tate, Tate with the cross, high to the far post. Vinicius with the header. Oh, brilliant save by Jose Sarr. That may have been a point-saving save from the Wolves goalkeeper. Vinicius seems certain to score, but Sarr really extending himself brilliantly to tip the ball aside. What a save. Absolutely brilliant save. I'm sure Carlos Vinicius thought this was in the back of the net. Absolutely. I was saying before, you know, he doesn't seem to have to touch the ball, impact the game, and he's left it. Now Vinicius wins another header from the corner inside the penalty area. Nodded down, but cleared. Now Lukic heads it all the way back to Robinson. He plays it wide to the far side, but Lamina clears the ball away. Wolves can break now with Pedence. Tries to find Neves, but it's Green who reads that well. And now Tate over the halfway line for Fulham on this near side. Wilson away to the right. Tate continues. The cross in, though, is headed away by Dawson. Jean Martinho tries to win it back on the edge of the box. Four minutes of added time to play here. 1-1 one, one the scoreline. And Wolves have a free kick on the edge of their own area for a challenge on Ruben Neves. I still can't believe that save from Jose Sarr. It was absolutely brilliant. You know, we often talk about centre-forwards when they score the winning goals. But for me, that was one of the best saves I've seen this season. Genuinely fantastic. He clawed that ball out of the far corner. Now Bueno. Back again towards Kilman. And Lamina, who is playing almost exclusively now as a third central defender, but now he charges forward over the top. Tries to find Diego Costa in the penalty area. Left-hand side, driven wide. He can't find Pedence with the layback. It's cut out by Tete. And Tete will clear the ball downfield again, up towards the halfway line. Vinicius looking to hold off Kilman. That's a free kick, nothing given. Pedence brings it forward now for Wolves on this near side. Bueno on the overlap encouraged to sprint and he gets there before Tate the cross in though was just behind Diego Costa a missed kick away by Lukic and then Pedence comes in and he sides Wilson down on the edge of the box and it will be a free kick yeah definitely it was a foul it was interesting because Ruben Neves just nonchalantly kicked the ball effortlessly to the back of the net but the whistle had already gone but it was getting it's getting been quite getting quite spicy this game and Carlos Vinicius nearly came up with the winner again it was almost like a deja vu against Chelsea barely touches the ball and then he seems to come up with something but I'm not quite sure why Fulham it's easier said than done why they didn't play the game in this way with this type of intensity all game because the last 10-15 minutes they've certainly come alive well Jose Sarr saved a penalty from Alexandra Mitrovic in the goal was straw at Molyneux back in August and he may have guaranteed his team a point with that stop from Carlos Vinicius here but Fulham still pushing hard for the winning goal here in the 97th minute on Talk Sport. 1-1 the score. And Lukic wins a throw in on this near side. Tate will take it. Infield towards Paulinha. And now Reem lofted into the feet of their goal scorer Solomon he spins in behind and he's found now by Pereira but Semedo is back to make the challenge but Solomon almost goes beyond him but in doing so runs the ball out and it will be a goal kick yeah really good tackle really good cut recovery it's annoying because it looked like Solomon almost got the better of Semedo there but good tackle in the end it's gone out for a goal kick and this might be the last kick of the game Jose Sarr will take the goal kick. I think Lopetegui would settle for a point at this stage. And judging by the hand signals, he's telling his team to remain compact. Sarr clears long downfield, flicked on by Traore. Costa will chase and he leaves plenty on Issa Diop. And it will be a free kick and that was classic Diego Costa. Yeah, again, he's that type of player that always plays on the edge, but... It's unfortunate because he, he looks like his football in the better days in his career are really done. I mean, he's come into this game, he's not had any type of impact. But it was a bit of a gamble when Wolves signed him. But I still think, you know, if he gets opportunity in front of goal, he could put it in the back of the net, but he just doesn't seem to find himself in those positions anymore. Dawson rises to head the ball away from the free kick. And he's dug out well by Polinia. 
And the full-time whistle goes. A point apiece here at Craven Cottage. Wolves ahead for some time, thanks to Pablo Sarabia, but an excellent equalising goal for Manuel Solomon off the bench. Once again, earning a point for the home side. They almost won it late on, but a brilliant save from Jose Sarr denying Carlos Vinicius and on the whole a draw really a fair result it's finished Fulham 1 Wolves 1